In this video, we will see how to write test vectors and self-testing test bench using readmanb. Let's go to Visual Studio Code and then in under the test bench folder, right click new file and then we will write our write our test vectors file by .dv. .dv stands for test vectors. Inside the file, we can list out all of the text vector. For example, when input A and B is both zero, the socket should give zero as the output. Zero one will give one, one zero will give one, and when both inputs are one, we will get zero. These are the expected result from our socket. If you notice, we have underscore and this won't affect the reading of the file later on because we will be using readman b where the b stands for binary. The binary reader will only consider values which are 0 or 1 and the underscore will be ignored. And we are using underscore here to improve the readability of the test vectors. Next, let's create our self-checking test bench. Let's call it my socket underscore db, which stands for test bench dot v because test bench is nothing but a very long code. And here is the code. Let me briefly explain the code. The first line is time scale and this is the time unit, 1 nanosecond, so that whenever we write hashtag 1, it means that we will have 1 nanosecond of delay. And this is the time precision. Let's enter our module, which is my socket underscore db test bench. This line here for the test vector value. Uh, we have for each test vector, this this one is counted as one test vector, another test vector, and so on. For each of the test vector, we'll have input A, which is this, and then input B, which is this, and also the expected output here. This wire is to be driven by the by socket, the device under test. Next, we will have clock variable. Although this is purely combinational circuit, but later on we will see how this clock helps to apply the test vector on rising edge and also check result on falling edge. This is good for keeping track of our loading and also checking of the test vector. Next, we have vector dump. Vector num is basically the index for the text, ve text vector. And then this errors is to store how many errors we have encountered so far in the simulation. This line here is what stores the entire test vectors. So all of this will be stored in this variable, in this array, this memory. The question now is how many bits that each vector should we put and how many rows should our test vectors variable contain? Let's look at our test vectors. In this test vectors file, we have these cases only. However, in this test vectors variable, we not only need to store all these cases, but also at least one line of uninitialized value. This is because later on when we iterating through the test vectors, for example, during the first iteration, 
we have this test vector, the second iteration, and so on. Until this line, then we will know that the simulation should stop because we have encountered uninitialized values. In short, this extra line of uninitialized values is to tell the simulator when to stop the simulation. So our test vectors will have to store all of this inside here. Now each test vector will have three bits. That's why we have three bits here. And as for the number of rows, we have one, two, three, four, five. That's why we have five here. Zero to four, which is equal to five. Then for the indexing of the vector, we are incrementing from zero, one, two, three, and then four. Four will be the maximum vector num value. And to store the decimal four in binary, we need at least three binary bits. That's why we have three bits here. And for the errors, the maximum number of errors that we will have is one, two, three, four, four cases, and three bits is enough to store the number four. Moving on to the next slide, we have my socket, and it is initialized as DUT, which stands for device under test. Put any name you want here, and it tags in the input. IA, which is from the test vector, IB, and then it will output OC to the wire. Later on, we will check this OC against the OC expected. This always block is to generate clock with period of 10 nanoseconds. At the beginning of the simulation, the clock will be set to 1. After 5 nanoseconds, it will drop down to zero like this. This is zero nanosecond, this is five nanosecond, and then stay zero until another five nanosecond, which is ten nanosecond, will be a rising edge again, so on and so forth. It is not very important to use exactly ten nanosecond for the period. It depends on your design and the timing constraint so on. But for simplicity here, I'll use 10 nanoseconds. This block of code is to load the test vectors. Is to load all of this into the test vectors variable here. It is important that the path should be absolute. Or like in my case, I'm using relative path. The relative path should be with respect to the model sim project. That is, the path should be relative to this folder. So to access the .tv file here, we must go out one directory to access the tool-tv folder and then flash the mysoget.tv file here. And then we have vector num equal zero, errors equal zero during the initialization. The indexing set to zero and the current number of error detectors is zero. Next, this block of code is where we start using our clock. During each rising edge, a test vector will be loaded from these test vectors using the vector num as the index. For example, this is one of the line from the test vectors. When we read the test vectors using the vector num, let's say vector num is zero, then we will read the first line here. And I A I B and then the output expected will be like this. I A equal zero, I B equal zero, and expected output equal to zero. When we set the I A and I B, notice that the input of the device under test will receive it, 
and then the device under test will output to the wire OC. During the falling edge, we'll check if the output from DUT is equal to the expected value or not. In case they are not equal, then we will display a low message saying that the inputs are IAIB, the output is OC, but then we are expecting this. And then we increment the error count. Next, we will increment the vector num, the index to assess the test vectors variable. So when we increment by one, we are going to the next line of the text test vectors. For example, when we are at this vector num equal zero, in and when we increment the vector num to one, we are actually moving down by one line to the next row of the test vectors. If that next line of the test vector is equal to uninitialized values like this. So we will be starting from vector num 0, 1, 2, 3. When we have a line of uninitialized values, then the simulator will know that this is when we should stop the simulation. So as you can see here, at this point, when we detected a row of uninitialized values, we are display saying how many tests has been completed and then number of error count. Finally, we have finished the simulation. And also, another thing is that we can print out the variable in transcript window like this monitor. Print out the time in nanosecond. And also print out the IAIB and the output value.